Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, just in time. Thank you, computer. So um, I'm Max. My co-authors are Brian Hall and Michael Nedling. And um, this work has been conducted at the University of Michigan School of Information. And I'm just going to click that away. Um, however, I'm now with uh, CNA as a user experience manager, so I got back uh, into industry. Um, how, wh wh why did we do this research? So we, we talked to people. We talked to friends, and we talked to students, we talked to colleagues and fellow researchers about mixed reality, and it seemed like everybody had kind of a different understanding of what mixed reality is. And then also some devices popped up and told us, well, we're not augmented reality, we're mixed reality. That's totally different. So um, we got confused and we asked ourselves, what is mixed reality then? It seemed like an unsolved question. Um, and I can tell you that we did not find a one-size-fits-all ultimate definition of mixed reality. Uh, rather, our work uh, has two contributions. So first of all, we're going to present six working definitions of mixed reality. And from these six working definitions, we're going to derive a conceptual framework to classify mixed reality experiences to make them better comparable, better understandable, and uh, to make it easier for you, actually, to put them into context. Um, the working definitions we found, uh, results first presentation, is uh, mixed reality according to the con continuum that many of you might know. Uh, mixed reality as a synonym for AR, uh, mixed reality as a combination of AR and VR, uh, mixed reality as a stronger version of augmented reality, as a type of collaboration, and as alignment of environments. I will get into the details later, obviously. And then the framework we derived has seven dimensions, the number of environments, the number of users, the level of immersion, the level of virtuality, the degree and interac uh, of interaction, uh, input, and output. Now, how did we get there? First, we interviewed uh, 10 experts from academia and industry to inquire into what, what they think, um, how they perceive uh, the different concepts. And after that, we conducted a lit review with uh, 68 sources that were related to uh, mixed reality research and also specifically to the difference between mixed reality and augmented reality. Um, step one, for the expert interviews, we designed a questionnaire that was intended to really inquire into how would experts define the different concepts? And we were also trying to push the boundaries and see like, um, what is enough to constitute mixed reality? That's why we also inquired into different aspects of reality that are relevant beyond the purely visual. So for example, we asked them, is listening to music, is that mixed reality? Um, is tilt brush mixed reality, where you have this fully virtual view, but you have a motion that's translated from the real world into the virtual world? And also Super Mario Brothers, where you push a button in the real world and somebody jumps on in, in a virtual environment. Might that be mixed reality? Um, additionally, we also asked them, will these concepts still exist in the future? Will they be different? Might they just uh, disappear? Um, and also whether a single definition of mixed reality would actually be useful, also especially for the HCI community. Um, as I said, we had uh, 10 experts. Five of them were from academia, five of them were from industry, and they included uh, professors, the head of an AR lab, a CEO of an AR company, the CTO of an AR company, uh, an R&D executive, and uh, some more. Uh, all of them had at least two years of experience in the field, and eight had more than eight years of experience. Um, what we found was that uh, augmented and mixed reality were much more difficult to define for the experts than virtual reality. So VR was always pretty clear. It was like you have a fully virtual view, and it was also mostly concerned with specific devices, say, head-worn displays. Um, but for mixed reality, we, had, we at least found that it seems that, according to the experts, spatial registration is necessary to constitute MR, and also that seeing at least part of the environment is necessary. Uh, that's why tilt brush, even though we had this motion that was translated from the real into the virtual, was mostly seen as, as we are, because you are fully immersed in the virtual view. Um, they also stated that simple input is not necessary, uh, uh, is not, not, uh, not enough, not enough to constitute MR. Again, the example tilt brush, so the motion capture was um, perceived as simple input, and they said, like, that's, that's not enough to constitute MR. Um, in general, they said a single definition would actually be useful, but they also agreed that this might never be happen, or at least is highly unlikely. 
And also from these interviews, we derive four initial working definitions of mixed reality. The first one, uh, mixed reality according to um, the continuum that was first presented in 1994 by Mikram and Kishino, uh, which basically just means mixed reality is anything in between completely real and completely virtual. Um, now the experts couldn't really agree on whether the extrema count into mixed reality or not. So it's both possible. Um, the second working definition, mixed reality as a synonym for augmented reality. So some experts said mixed reality, that's just like a new marketing term for augmented reality, but other than that, there's no difference. So not a lot to add here. Uh, mixed reality as a combination of AR and VR. This is more interesting. So one specific example would be Pokemon Go, where you have a fully virtual overworld, which, is, which could be VR and you catch Pokemon in an augmented reality view. So you have one system that combines both. Some experts said that's uh, mixed reality. And then finally, the fourth one we derived from the interviews, uh, mixed reality as a stronger version of AR, where they said that while you are just an observer in simple AR, where you just view a scene through, your, through the camera of your smartphone, in mixed reality you can really walk into the scene and also the devices have a better understanding of the environment than simple AR devices. So one example that was given here a lot was HoloLens. Then in step two, we did the literature review to um, confirm these things we found in the, in the interviews. And for this, we selected um, papers from Kai, Kai Play, Wist, and Ismar between 2014 and 2018 uh, that included mixed reality in their title or abstract. And then we added four other sources that we knew were dealing with the specific differences between AR um, and MR. So we looked at all of the papers, and in the papers we um, tried to find the uh, points at which the authors defined their understanding of mixed reality. And we also looked at which papers were cited as definitions of mixed reality. Um, so this is the citation graph for the first round of the literature review, and as you can see, for example, Mirko Makishino, 94, cited quite a lot. Um, in general, on a high level, the findings uh, we derived from, from the uh, literature review was that different conferences seem to use different notions of mixed reality. So for example, while Kai seems to be more about collaboration, Kai Play seems to be more about aligning environments. Uh, overall, there were 22 sources that were cited to define or explain mixed reality. And Milgram and Kishino, 1994, the continuum, is indeed the single most cited source for mixed reality but it was used by much less than 50% of the papers we reviewed. So it is the single most popular notion, but it's not universal. And also finally, we found, uh, besides confirming the four notions we already found, we found two additional working definitions of mixed reality. So the fifth one was mixed reality as collaboration, where um, an AR and or VR system is used to facilitate the collaboration between more than one user. So in this specific example that we reviewed, uh, we have an AR user and a remote VR user, and the environment of the AR user is recreated in virtual reality for the remote collaborator. And then finally, the sixth um, working definition we found is mixed reality as an alignment of environments, where we have two distinct environments that are um, synced through some sensory tracking or input. Uh, so this specific example is an earthquake table where we have building blocks on the earthquake table and a projection and um, whatever happens to the building blocks is synchronized with the virtual view um, in the projection. So the uh, environments are synced. So that gives us a total of six working definitions of mixed reality that we found to be in use in the wild. Um, according to the continuum, as a synonym for AR, as a combination of AR and VR, strong AR, MR as collaboration, and as an alignment of environments. Now, we took all of these working definitions and uh, we wanted to make this conceptual framework out of them. So uh, we tried to find the dimensions that would um, uniquely identify uh, the specific differences between the different notions so that each one of them could be classified unambiguously. And what we found is that the number of environments is important. Uh, the number of users is important, especially for the collaboration aspect, and um, the level of immersion, so how immersed you feel, the level of virtuality, which is independent of the immersion, but it tells 
how virtual, how much virtual content you are uh, actually experiencing. And it's also very important to um, distinguish between implicit and explicit interaction in all of these experiences. But more to that, um, we also inquired into uh, the relevant aspects of reality that um, might be considered for MR beyond the purely visual, both in the expert interviews and the lit review. Um, and what we found is that um, audio might be relevant for MR. Motion, haptics, taste, flavor. Some people have started looking into smell. Um, geolocation can be an input or output. Uh, temperature is important. And basically, anything sensors can track can be an input to mixed reality. And any stimuli or sensory modalities that you can feel and experience can be an output to MR systems. So we took input and output, and we also added it to the framework. Um, now, these are uh, very important on a per-experience uh, basis to define certain experiences. Uh, but for the working definitions, input and output can just be anything. So it's independent of the notion, but very important on, for, for specific applications. So um, to get back to the example with the earthquake table, um, here we have many environments. We have one too many users because um, obviously more than one person can play with the earthquake table. Um, the whole experience is not too partly immersive because we have this um, earthquake table that is just a purely real environment and we have a projection where you can argue how immersive it is. Um, then it's also both not and fully virtual, so earthquake table versus projection. Uh, we have implicit and explicit interactions because you can just walk around the the whole mixed reality scene, but you can also explicitly interact with the building blocks and just push them down and the environments will be aligned. So therefore the input is motion and the output is visual. And this is how would, we would uh, classify this very specific mixed reality experience according to the conceptual framework we just came up with. So to conclude, what, then what is mixed reality? According to one of our interviewees, it's all marketing mambo jumbo at this point in time. However, we believe that um, as of now, mixed reality is, is one of six things, and all of these six things are valid, but it just depends on the background and the specific experience of which of these six things constitute the type of mixed reality you're describing. Um, also, it's an evolving concept, so some of these working definitions might uh, disappear. There might be new ones coming up. Um, also, the conceptual framework that we came up, as of now, I think is, we got a pretty complete picture, but also this one might change um, in the future. Uh, but most importantly, mixed reality is something we need a common vocabulary for. First of all, so that we can put our work into context, um, so that different works based on mixed reality are better comparable, uh, better understandable, and also um, just to avoid misunderstandings when talking about mixed reality in the HCI community, but also in the research community in general. And yeah, we were hoping that we can provide a very good basis for that. And um, thank you for your attention. OK, that's great. Uh, so again, questions, actually? Uh, I guess Stan. Uh, Oliver Schneider, Waterloo. So, the experts said that it usually involves sight. We often think of VR and mixed reality as having headsets or screens. But what would your impression be for people with sensory impairments, for example, people who are blind or visually impaired? Um, even in your classification for input-output, there's all sorts of uh, possibilities there, but you said in addition to visual feedback. No, no, no. Um, what I meant was beyond visual. So. Beyond visual. Yeah, yeah, beyond visual. So none of this is uh, restricted to, to visual output. So could be could be anything. If you if you are talking about impair, like visually impaired users, um, you could still have some spatially registered audio, and that would be mixed reality according to this conceptual framework for the visually impaired user. Okay. So that it, visual is not a necessity here. Okay, great. Do you have any ideas of how? this might inform work into, because I, I still think we're very headset and screen focused yeah. with, with, any, with star reality, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, any insight into how, we might, how this framework might help us when we look to people who, for example, have these impairments? Um, we don't, 
did not specifically look into that. I mean, we're hoping that it will facilitate, facilitate work into this direction and probably help, um, yeah, thinking outside this whole headset box that, that you're describing. Uh, but we've not asked specific questions about that. We'll just, we'll just see what happens, right? So, and we're actually hoping to contribute to getting outside that box, yeah. Hey, Dan Cosley, uh, Cornell University, and uh, actually speaking a little more of my NSF role right now. So first of all, I really appreciate the work to try to define this because when I see proposals on mixed reality come in, and often it's totally unclear what's happening, and it's like the rest of the CHI community saying cyberbullying or crowdsourcing, right? meaning everything from like Wikipedia to Uber. Okay, so I really appreciate this. I like the work to, to move towards definitions. And I'm just curious if you have any sort of preferred personal definitions that you would like, or terms for certain classes of this that you'd like to do to carve up this mixed reality term a little bit to, to, to help create that vocabulary? Because you get to be prescriptive a little bit when you do an analysis like this. So tell me what you think. Um, I have a least favorite working definition, which is simply using mixed reality as a synonym for augmented reality. That I mean, that is kind of lame, right? So, um, but it, I mean, it's out there. People are using it, so we have to consider it. But um, it's also kind of odd to have two different terms for the same thing. We, but we're just like acknowledging that people are doing this. But um, uh, yeah, so working definition number two is definitely my least favorite. And I think that one should maybe go away at some point for less confusion. Um, but I think all, all the others are absolutely valid because they just describe they are kind of competing and also kind of overlapping, but they're all valid definitions. And um, yeah, no favorite there. It's just very important to be clear about what you're talking about, and that's why we did this conceptual framework thing. Right. Hi there. Um, thanks for your talk. I'm Yulong from University of Constance, Germany. So uh, your paper just answers one of the questions from mine uh, several months ago. I, I asked this question. Uh, to one of my colleagues. Um, because like during my master, I only know AR. I work on uh, mobile AR devices, uh, applications. But after like the HoloLens came out, I start to know the concept MR, but still I don't see the difference. But now like for many people, I ask them like, what kind of devices do you think it is AR or VR? So from this point of view, um, have you asked your participants like which kind of device they think is AR or VR? For example, for HoloLens, for me, it's, a, it's still an AR, so I, I can't tell the difference. Uh, it's head-mounted AR. Uh, yeah. Uh, before I forget it, I, um, one, one more thing. Michael says hi to his mom. Hi, Michael's mom. Um, uh, to get back to your question, so we did not specifically ask about um, devices, but uh, in the case of this um, strong AR definition of mixed reality, uh, some of the experts explicitly said like this is probably bound to a specific device, which would be HoloLens in this case. Um, other than that, head-mounted displays where you have really a fully immersive view were usually seen as VR. So the only specific mixed reality device mentioned was the HoloLens. Anything else, head-mounted.